For the second time this series, the Tigers fell victim to the bat of Nelson Cruz in the 11th. And for the third time this series, the Tigers lost the game that some may argue they should have won. As for the atmosphere inside the locker room after the game, it was unlike any other, including a dance party that featured music stars Kid Rock, Rev Run, and Bob Seger. For most of the game, Michigan State seemed destined for a second straight Big Ten championship and a trip to the Rose Bowl for the first time since 1988. But in the end, on a running into the kicker penalty, the Roses that seemed so firmly in their grasp were swiped away. The matchup between these two in-state rivals as ranked teams for the first time since 1998 lived up to its billing, coming down to a final shot from Draymond Green that was just off the mark. And how tightly contested this game was down to the very end may be an indication of how fierce this rivalry has gotten to be. They may not have been picked to get here when the season began, but with one more win in the inaugural Big Ten Championship game, Michigan State will have secured a second straight Big Ten Championship and a berth in the Rose Bowl. Great teams often have great leadership, but what makes a great leader? What makes a good leader? It's a guy that can walk the talk, you know. I think that, that's one thing, a guy that gets is respected by his teammates because he's earned it, you know. Coach Izzo sounds like he could be talking about his team's leader, Draymond Green, but his description also sounds a lot like the football team's leader, Kirk Cousins. The thing that he does the best is that um, he's great for team chemistry. A great leader makes somebody else better. Again, Coach Izzo's description brings Cousins to mind. I think he's just got that Whatever it is, he's just got it when he steps in the huddle. He just makes everybody around him a little better. Makes everybody around him feel like they're going to be a little bit more successful. And, um, and that's the true sign of a true leader, I think. Cousins will go down as one of the greatest leaders in MSU football history. Green has been named among the greatest leaders in MSU basketball history. And while there are currently two on Michigan State's campus, leaders of their quality are few and far between. You know, you, you don't have a ton of them. I mean, uh, there's not as many as you think. Uh, I think our football program's got one. I think we've got one too. The leadership qualities between Cousins and Green are similar in more ways than one and are a big reason why the football team is playing for a Big Ten championship this weekend and why the basketball team could be playing for one this winter. From Michigan State University, Evan Beach, Sports Extra. After just 11 wins in their first 30 games, it's no surprise that the Spear decided to fire Todd Watson. But what made the organization pull the trigger is the fact that a guy like Greg Gilbert was available. A coach whose NHL pedigree makes him a home run, or should I say a hat trick, higher. This is the guy we were after, and we thought that if we could get Greg Gilbert, then we would make a change. If not, then we'd stay status quo. Uh, we were, it, it was evident a short period of time after sitting down with him that his qualities, his, his values, his passion for winning mirrored ours, and that we had a good fit for him, and he had a good fit for us. Gilbert's coaching success at the NHL, AHL, and OHL levels made him a perfect fit for the Spirit, while the Spirit are a perfect fit for Gilbert, a coach who has a passion for developing young players. You can get them at a time in their, their career where they're willing to listen and learn for the most part and the ones that don't want to listen and learn you got to try to break them like a stallion and, and get them to understand that you're here to help them. Gilbert's task now is to help the spirit reach the expectations that they've been falling short of so far this season. Looking at some of the skill and, and uh, the players that we have in the room are, are much more capable of being in a higher position than what we're sitting right now. You know it comes down on us and uh, you know we just we want to turn the season around we don't want we don't want to keep losing. No matter how the rest of the season turns out, the organization is confident Gilbert will establish a winner in Saginaw. We want our teams to compete, and uh, his teams will compete real hard, and whatever that takes us this year, it will. Uh, but we feel that over the next few years, you're going to see a team here that everybody's be proud of, and that'll create championships. With Greg Gilbert stepping into the spotlight as the new coach of the Spirit, only time will tell if he can bring championships to the Dow Event Center. From Saginaw, Evan Beach, Sports Extra. Baseball is like golf, only in that you try to hit a ball with a long stick. But as some Loons players found out, it's a game that is much more difficult than it seems. One of our guys out here in the fairway snapped somebody's uh, the short club, game. so... Me. <laughs> <laughs> Never in my life played golf, so it's my first time. Was it your club that he broke? Yeah. <laughs> no, no hard feelings on no, that? No, anybody can do that. <laughs> One other similarity between baseball and golf is it's a game where you must have confidence, something many of the loons, especially the pitchers, did not lack. 
I'm gonna say I'm, I'm probably one of the best. He's probably one of the best. Yeah. Best on the team, or yeah, best talkers. Best. Talkers. Yeah, I can <laughs> talk a mad game. <laughs> you're gonna I am the golfer the of balloons. All right, the golfer of balloons. Zach Lee thinks he's got something on me. Pete uh, seems to think that uh, he's the best golfer on the team. What do you think about that? Pete Buckethead? Yeah. Uh, we'll have to play for it. Uh, I haven't seen him play a whole lot. I saw him on the range a little bit, but uh, I don't know. Uh, if I'm playing a lot, um, I definitely think I, I can make a run for it. I'll take his 5.2 signing bonus. <laughs> take it and win it. Steal it all from him. Pete Bukovic is, is probably the best. I played with him a couple times. He pretty much kills me every time. That's, he said he's the best. Yeah, he, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. I'll pair up with so anybody else take on two other loons, guarantee you I take their money. You you you've been seeing him play. How is he? Uh, he's not too bad for a baseball player. <laughs> but according to some loons players, it isn't how you play, it's how you look. You look good. You golf decent. Now <laughs> you're golfing just fine. Well, I guess somebody needs to tell Red Patterson that theory. <laughs> what kind of gloves are those? Those are Rollins. Rollins baseball gloves. You know, uh, gold glove award. <laughs> you know, it's whatever. Here's the question, Red. Does it really matter how you golf? No, absolutely not. Why not? Because, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be the best at golf. What are you trying to be best at? Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> With the loons at Apple Mountain, I'm Evan Beach for Sports Extra. Now, with coverage you can count on, you're watching Sports Extra. There's a common saying in sports that offense sells tickets, defense wins championships. And even in the year of the quarterback, that saying is seeming to hold true in the NFL playoffs. Gone are Drew Brees and the Saints, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, and unfortunately, Matthew Stafford and the Lions, maybe next year. The four teams still left, three of them, the Baltimore Ravens, San Francisco 49ers, and New York Giants are three of the best defenses in the NFL. The one other team, well, Tom Brady is hoping the year of the quarterback can live on a little more with him and his New England Patriots. The AFC Championship, Baltimore at New England, fourth quarter, Baltimore up 2016, New England on the goal line. Brady flips up and over the line, the Patriots take a 23-20 lead. Final minute, Baltimore still down three on a final drive. Joel Flacco with a dart to Lee Evans, but the ball is knocked out at the last minute. A touchdown saving play. So 15 seconds left. Baltimore just needing a field goal to tie and send it into overtime. But Billy Cundiff shades of Ray Finkel, laces out. Dan misses the field goal. A crushing way to lose for Baltimore as the Patriots escape 23-20 to win the AFC Championship and head to the Super Bowl. It's a kick I've kicked probably a thousand times in my career, as a, and uh, went out there and just didn't didn't convert. That's just kind of the way things go. You know, just uh, there's really no excuse for it. Just didn't go through. It's tough to get here, man. It's hard to win these games. It's hard to win games in the NFL because every team is very talented. And uh, you know, we did enough here the last ten weeks to to win these games. I'm sure this next game is going to come down to the end, and hopefully, we have enough plays. So. To the NFC Championship game, the New York Giants at San Francisco 49ers. Fourth quarter, Giants down 14-10 and punting. Kyle Williams making a big mistake, touching the football. Former Michigan State wide receiver Devin Thomas recovers it. It was whistled dead by the officials, but replays show the ball did indeed touch Williams' leg. So the Giants take over, and that leads to this. Eli Manning going to the end zone for former Michigan wide receiver Mario Manningham. 17-14 Giants. The Niners would kick a game-tying field goal to set it into overtime, and after a few defensive stands by both teams, Lawrence Tynes shows Billy Cundiff how it's done, kicking through the game-winning field goal to send the Giants to the Super Bowl with a 20-17 win in overtime. So it is a rematch of the 2007 Super Bowl as the New York Giants will again meet the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl at Indianapolis Lucas Oil Field in two weeks on Sunday, February 5th. Who knows, with the way the organization is improving, maybe the Lions will find themselves in the Super Bowl in the near future. And it wouldn't surprise one of the organization's all-time greats, a former Lions running back and Heisman Trophy winner out of an Oklahoma school with the initials BNS. And the number 20, still probably not the one you may be thinking of, though. Billy Sims, not Barry Sanders, was in Bay City yesterday as the guest speaker for the St. Stanislaus Athletic Club's 74th Annual Banquet. 
where our Scott Johnson was also the Toastmaster. He was able to catch up with Sims, who is happy to see the Lions have turned things around, and Sims likes their chances for next year. Hey, it's about time. I've been roaring till I roar it out. Now we got it back. So hopefully they got a little taste of, of the playoff and uh, get a few more pieces. I think uh, they can get over the hump next year. Sims, of course, played for the Lions after being the number one overall pick in 1980 and was one of the best players in the NFL in the early 80s. The Heisman winning running back from Oklahoma rushed for 5,106 yards and 42 touchdowns in just five seasons with the Lions while making the Pro Bowl in 1980, 81, and 82. Unfortunately, those were the only years Sims played in the NFL after suffering a catastrophic knee injury in the 84 season that ended his career. If not for the injury, I still be playing. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> probably so. I probably could have played a little longer, but you know it was good while it lasted. But I think if you know it wasn't for my injury, I probably had a, maybe a shot of, at, at the Hall of Fame at the way I was running and uh, at the time, you know, the yards I was I was getting every year. But other than that, you know, I was very fortunate and blessed to have an opportunity to showcase my talent at that level. Okay. And I look around; there's been a lot of guys that never made it out of high school or college, so uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to play for the Lions. On the ice today, the Saginaw Spirit win their second in a row and third in their last four with a 3-1 win over the Majors in Mississauga. Clint Windsor with a nice job in net for the Spirit, stopping 30 of 31 shots. Brandon Saad so had a goal and assist. Vincent Trocek had two assists, so a good win for the Spirit. And that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching. Good night.